Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to our family service. We will begin this morning with the ringing of the kancho. The ringing of the kancho signifies the start of the service, so please sit quietly. Please rise for meditation, followed by the chanting of the Vandana Tisarana by the congregation in Pali and in English, found in the Brown Praises of the Buddha book, page 165. Thank you.
Adams Nama. Thank you. Please be seated. This time, please turn to the sutra, the English Junidai, called the Twelve Homages, on page 120 in the Red Jodo Shinshu Service Book. Again, that's on page 120, Twelve Homages. Leads to enlightenment. 
Thus I vow to Amida. Amida, thus I have praised virtues boundless like the sea. These virtues shared with others for birth into <coughs> the pure land. Namanda. Temple, the purple book right in front of you in the pocket in front for the recitation of our pledge, page 44. Reaching out to others, I will share a smile and gentle words, just like the Buddha who always calls out with aloha. Breaking away from my greed, anger, and ignorance, I will try to live in peace and harmony just like the Buddha, who shares tranquility and kindness with all. Moving forward from self-centeredness, I will share a life of joy and sorrow with others, just like the Buddha, whose caring heart always embraces us. Realizing that I live because of others, I will strive to live life to the fullest with an attitude of gratitude, just like the Buddha, Please continue to rise. Our gatha this morning is gentle hands, and you have a printout. Gentle hands. Please be seated. This morning, our speaker is none other than our own member from our temple, Bob Nishita. Bob? Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me good? 
This morning I'd like to share with you the book that I read, River of Fire, River of Water by Taitetsu Uno. No, I'm not going to uh, summarize or anything because Dr. Reverend Burt and Nishiyama Sensei did a good job. I just want to read you the um, poem, two points from there. One is uh, chapter four, home, com home composing. I thought this was interesting. As part of an effort to become more environmental conscious, my hometown of North Hampton, Massachusetts, has been encouraging home composting by all residents. After all, every little bit helps solve ecological problem over full landfill, chemical poisoning, deforestation, soil erosion, and disappearing ozone layer. Each household was given manual on composing with detailed instruction on waste material to use. A mixture of decaying organic substance such as food, scrap, apples and banana peels, leftover leaf vegetables, coffee grinds, cut lawns and shredded leaves will not only reduce trash but produce rich fertile soil. As I was reading the material, I was reminded of Shin poem by Chisho Yanagida. The poem goes like this. When a soil receives a wasted material, the wasted material is turned into a soil. It's not necessary to change into a soil. To become part of the soil, the soil receives whatever is given without making any demands. Namu Amidaba to receive a person just as he is. When Nembu to receive a person, no matter who or what, the person is transformed into the Nembutsu, calibrating into blessed life. Nembutsu take me as I am, imperfect and incomplete, with worries and problems and transform everything into contents of highest bad virtues. The wonder of number two path is that makes no demands upon a person to become wiser, better, or more perfect. But does, but it does not ask us to become automatically uh, real as a human being by awkwardness to be the boundless compassion that sustain us. In doing so, we recognize our limitation and imperfect as comic being that are ultimately transformed into contents of highest good when bits of rubble and transform into gold. Fullness of Buddha's Dharma is manifest in person's life. Before I continue, I want to talk about um, imperfectness. A lot of times we think to ourselves, oh, we cannot be perfect. The reason we are not perfect, try to go it as a computer programmer, trying to program a com computer to match a um, chess player. He thinks about it and thinks about it. He thinks, say, you know what, I'm gonna program this computer to be imperfect so that he'll learn each mistake, and as he plays, he'll get better and better. And that's true with all of us. We try to be perfect, but think about it. Through all our lives, we try to be perfect, but shucks, I did something wrong. And that always gonna remind you more than the things you did right, I think. But that's the reason why I think we are imperfect, so that we learn to be, learn from our mistakes. I was sharing this with uh, Neil one day, and I said, 
I don't know what, what I was talking to one of my co-workers and I don't know if I was being hard on myself, but uh, one day my co-worker Ron said, hey, even monkey fall off from tree, you know. And I had to laugh, and all of us laughed about it. And, you know, we kind of moved on and said, that's right, even monkeys fall off on trees, but they don't think about the mistake they did. They just climb the tree and go on with their life. But I want to continue with uh, the same thought with this month's Kaleo, Kahela, September, the story on Infinite Initiatory. When our founder, Shinran Shoni, explained Amida Buddha's virtue, he often used metaphor of the ocean. He said that boundless or income of the Buddha's virtue is like the ocean. He also said in Shoshinge, when ignorant and wise, even grave offenders and slanders of the Dharma, all are like turn about and entrust Shinjin. They are like water that on entering the ocean becomes one in case with it. According to these words, Shinra Shonin, we who enter ourselves and trust ourselves to Amida Buddha will be born into the pure land and will be charged, changed into virtue and enlightenment through the power of Amida Buddha's vow. The vast ocean of Amida Buddha's pure land except all of us. Everybody is included. The ocean does not reject any kind of river. It accepts all river, including a muddy water. Two and all rivers on entering the ocean becomes complete, one with it, its salty taste. Just as a various river enter the ocean and immediately become sea of water, so do various lives return to appear land and immediately attain enlightenment. That's the vast ocean of Amida Buddha's pure land is where our lives shall reach. Also on the um, Bishop Matsumoto also said in a short phrase, it is true that Amida accept just as we are, full of imperfectness. However, this does not mean that it's okay to wantonly contribute to suffering and live selfishly. The other part I want to read to you is the other power on chapter seven. Empowerment fuels us to openly acknowledge our initiation and imperfect, even our addiction and neurosis. Through the working of our other power, we become ourselves truly to embrace and feel feeling without regret, remorse, and feel guilty because of this special space and understanding provides us the willingness of shame Buddhists abound with pure emotional full exposed joy, sadness, humor, sorrow, anger, foolishness, repent, gratitude, liberty from lingering effect of our karmic past. We move forward in life positively and creatively. What this means may be illustrated by the life of a Shin Buddhist woman by the name of Haru Matsuda, who left many religious poems to express her deep insight into her life. Mrs. Matsuda was one of many Japanese immigrants settled in Kona. Hawaii is at the turn of the century. 
form the community around Shin Buddhist temple known as Kona Honganji, nature by her fate. She exposes her appreciation in short poem as a Japanese custom. Among the countless poems that she wrote are the following. Embraced by the compassion, I vow never to complain. Thinking thus, again, I complain. Rubbing my eyes in the morning, I began complaining. I'll jump and I really woke up. Living under the several economic difficulties in an alien hostile world, Mrs. Matsuda and her family toiled in the coffee fields of Kona. She worked from sunrise to sunset while tending to the needs of a large family. Her life was filled with hardship, disappointment, and complaints. Yet, she endured and flourished, having been infused by the compassion of Amida. The compassionate working of awake, awakening her eyes to a human finite, limited, imperfect, and more contained within the all-sustaining power of Amida. Having been shown her true self and grateful for this insight, she vowed never to complain, but in that very instance, she found herself complaining. She was again showing her true nature, but at the same instant realized that she had already been accepted by a great Compassion in the words of Shinran. All this the Buddha already know, knew and called us a foolish being of blind passion. The second point, even more to the point, getting up in the morning, Mrs. Matsuda must have felt the awesome task ahead of her, and she began to complain at the very moment. I'll jump on my double two. Though I accumulated years of deep hearing, the Nembutsu and became part of some cautious, now it has surfaced to reveal her true re reality. Namu Ami Dabutsu affirmed each Namu, lost, confused, and complaining within the great compassion of Ami Dabutsu. Immersible light and light. Each saying of Nembutu release us into a boundless, limitless universe. When Namami Dabutu struck her, she really woke up not only to prepare for the day's work, but to really real, reality of the human condition. She now affirmed her limitation, not as bondage, but as a liberating moment to deep into true and real life. With the wisdom and power endow her, Mrs. Matsuda overcame all kinds of adversity, bringing up fine ch children, show compassion for the less fortunate, and contribute enhancing life with a community. It goes on and on, but I think I'll stop here. But you know, all of us complain. I don't think she's the only person. I complain and say, no, I won't complain. And then, just like her, I'll, I'll be complaining again. But, you know, to hold back complain, I think is not good either. We need to let go. I mean, when I get together with one of my friends, with my best friend, I always complain and I, I'm on road on him and I'm thinking, shucks, you know, I'm being unfair. I should at least listen to him. I'm not sure be the only one complaining to the person, you know. But you know, we all get selfish, we complain. But then it's not good to keep with your bad thoughts. And at least better to 
let go and unload and tell your friends, sorry, but I gotta let go, my company don't own you. <laughs> I'll end this uh, story on River of Fire, but I wanna talk about um, attitude. Bad attitude is just like um, you have a flat tire. If you don't change your attitude, you can't go anywhere. I'll take you back to 1968 in Biloxi, Mississippi, where I was stationed for a little while. I was going to school there. Biloxi, Mississippi is a resort town of um, Mississippi. It's almost like going to Vegas for the people in Southern State, I think. It's a resort town. But it's a home to Air Force uh, training school for electronic and also Hurricane uh, Hunters, uh, C-130. Anyway, I was, after we got to school was dismissed, we all have to march back to our barracks and as she got me dismissed, as I was getting into my barracks, one of my bunkmates said, oh, Bob, you just missed a like, commotion. I said, oh, what happened? Oh, this guy had a big chip on his shoulder and he's causing a commotion and that's all I got from that guy. I go, oh, well, what happened to him? I just, and they said, this guy said, oh, he's with the first sergeant and um, lieutenant, they're having a discussion. I said, oh. That's what, not a way to start right after basic training and that's your start of your bit. training for Air Force career. And another guy stopped me and said, you know, Bob, I have some people like that where I come from. He's from the Midwest. But they're nice people. But this guy is, I don't, I don't know, he's something else. And, and that's all I got, and, you know, thinking that, yeah, bad attitude is not going to take you anywhere. And I want to introduce you to Candy Candy. I wanted to talk to you about Candy Candy for the longest time, but I didn't know how to introduce it to you. And it's a story about, it's an animated story about uh, this girl in Michigan. Takes The story takes place in 1900 to 1919. As she grew up from a baby to a lady. As she, um, let's start from the beginning. She was left in orphanage. She and another girl was left in orphanage. And there was no note, but the baby was having, uh, had a baby doll with the name Candy, so they have surmised, oh, let's call her Candy. And she grew up in um, Michigan, in the orphanage, and about, I guess, four or five, she lost her best friend. She was adopted, and she felt depressed. But she, you know, I won't tell you the whole story, but anyway, she, somehow grew up to be at home. All the trouble she got into, and yeah, she was a tomboy, and she, but you know, she, all the experiences taught her, I guess, and as she finally got adopted, but actually adopted to a family to serve as a playmate and a servant, and she not really adopted to a family that will care for her and she, but she persevered and grew to it and she ended up in, because the person's daughter and son was going to dormitory in England, she was also allowed to go. But the one, one thing I want to tell you was that her attitude when even though she was teased, she will come back with Oh, thank you for pointing that out to me. I didn't realize that. 
you know, that kind of attitude, I think, is what I wanted to share with you, that all of us sometimes are told how to do this, and sometimes people are brought to the, they mean well, but they tell you in a certain way, it's kind of hurtful and go, oh, you know, you kind of hold back and thinking, oh, how should I answer that? But, but you, I think the best way to answer is, oh, thank you, I didn't see it that way, but oh, that's a good idea. You know, in that kind of tone, if you always look to the positive side, I think it's a better life that you can lead. And I wanted to end with that story of being positive. Thank you for, for, for me to share my story. Thank you and Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Please rise for the Gatha Namu Amidabutsu on page 104 of the Brown Praises of the Buddha book and continue to stand for the Nembutsu. Again, that is page 104, Namu Amidabutsu.
Thank you. This ends our service today. We have announcements. Prudence? Good morning. I bet you guys are all wondering, what happened to Reverend? <laughs> well, Reverend couldn't make it today. It was sort of a last minute thing. So thank goodness that some of us were able to pick up. And I think Cynthia did a good job leading us. And we had Dennis hitting the con show. So thank you. Uh, thank you all for doing the MC uh, Role and Alan for being reader, and of course, forever Ryan, thank you for recording it. And our refreshments today again is by Dana and her team. Uh, let's see. Also, because today was our peace day, supposed to be our peace day walk around, and because Reverend's not here, we're not making that walk. So for those of you that were planning to do that, we're very sorry, but we won't be doing that. However, because uh, people made the cranes and that uh, we put them on little dowels, you will all be able to take those with you. So that's going to be available next door. Uh, thanks, Joy, also for playing the piano. And you can tell that we're trying to learn new dharma, so you might be singing the same song again next Sunday. I think Joy's going to let us do it till we get it. And I can't get it yet. Uh, let's see. Uh, now, next, this coming Wednesday is the official International Peace Day. So we are going to be ringing the Kancho here. So anybody that can make it to be here by about 8.30. And then there's a short service that we would be able to see on a computer. And then if from 9 o'clock, they're going to start ringing the bell. And I guess this year they've got people from all over the parts of Canada, other European countries, and I think the largest group is from St. Joseph High School in Hilo. There's a whole bunch of students that are going to be ringing all kinds of bells. So if you can make it, please come. And the following week, we have our Ohigang service. Reverend Baba is our guest speaker. And it's also going to be Remembrance uh, Sunday. So if you have anybody that you want to remember that passed away in any year in September, uh, you can have their names listed as you enter, and they will be recognized during the service. Any announcements? Prudence, yes. for that Peace Day service, they don't have to come here to attend. They can RSVP and attend from home. Right, you can do that too. The sign is out there. You can do that from home, but if you want to come ring this bell, you can come here. Okay. What's that? Oh, and because we're going to be singing the same songs for a while, as you leave, can you just leave that, um, your handout on the table? Okay. And toss the green uh, serve short service thing in the rubbish can there. Any other announcements? None for you? Um, okay, then let's close by reciting the words of thanksgiving before we go next door. It's on your, in your red book, page 126. We are truly grateful for this wonderful food, the gift of life. May we share its benefits with all beings as we partake of this food. Let us remember Amida Buddha's compassion, which surrounds all people and all forms of life. Namu Amida Buddha. Thank you.